Hi guys, my name is Alexa Gerard. I'm making this video because there's actually a situation lingering in today's society that started long ago when children with polio or deformities due to thalidomide, as well as kids who were considered and called retarded, were shunned and generally avoided by their classmates and other people their age. They were bullied, laughed at, put down and mocked. Today, unfortunately, those with disabilities like autism and Down syndrome have become those shunned individuals, some obviously affected worse than others. High functioning is a buzzword describing those with abilities to not only communicate, but could and should become friends and acquaintances of others, not only for the good of neurotypical people, but certainly for the majority of those with autism, Down syndrome, and other disabilities. As we talk right now, 1 in 160 people are diagnosed with autism, and 1 in 1,000 are diagnosed with Down syndrome. In the U.S. alone, 1 in 45 people are autistic, and 1 in 700 people have Down syndrome. Listen, that's an awful lot of kids and adults who are saddened and lonely and, in many cases, have never had a friend, have never gotten invited to a friend's house, to a party, out with friends like to the mall, asked to a dance. Something has to change. Trust me, I've tried everything to get my peers to accept me and include me. I've tried just being myself. I've tried being social. I've tried doing nice things for people to make them feel good. I've tried giving people my phone number and social media. I've tried telling those who excluded me how I felt. I've tried inviting them first, hoping they would return the favor. I've tried making new friends. I've tried joining school clubs and extracurricular activities. I've tried doing stuff to try to fit in. For example, dressing like the other girls and following popular trends. I've tried befriending people older than me, befriending people younger than me, and I've even tried befriending those who volunteer with their disabled peers. But no luck. I still got excluded no matter what I did. My peers are nice to me and they generally like me, and they tell me I'm a good person and call me a friend. But not once has anyone ever called me, texted me, or invited me anywhere. And it hurts. It's very rude. I'm sure it's the same way for everyone with a disability. So yeah, something does have to change. Getting excluded despite being liked by others is an unfortunately common thing people with disabilities have to go through, and I'm sure every disabled person hates it. Those with disabilities didn't choose to be disabled, and all they want is to be included and have close friends. Here's what I, a high-functioning autistic young woman, thinks. I'm a young woman determined to promote change, to find a way of making those with disabilities more apt to find friendships and be accepted, not shunned and avoided. First off, ask yourself this question. Why do you exclude people with disabilities, especially the ones you say are your friends? What exactly are they doing wrong to make you not want to invite them anywhere? Do you have trouble communicating with them? Well, if that's the case, what you should do is try to get in touch with their parents. I know, if you're a teenager or a young adult, not a little kid anymore, you're way past the age of parents getting involved in your friendships. But for those with disabilities, it's different. Oftentimes, they need their parents' help to communicate and cope with things. If you want to invite your disabled friends somewhere, but they don't communicate well enough, send them an invitation through their parents. Their parent might actually stay if your disabled friend comes over to your house rather than just dropping them off, or come with you guys if you invite your disabled friends somewhere, but instead of thinking to yourself, Oh, this is so uncool. Oh, we're way too old for this. Just focus on the fact that you included your disabled friend and made them feel good. Are you just trying to fit in or be cool or popular? Well, it's not cool at all to shun or exclude someone, especially someone with a disability. You may think that avoiding disabled people makes you look cool, but it actually doesn't. Believe it or not, the actual cool thing to do 
is to befriend disabled people and include them. Also, please know that things like social status and popularity are not going to matter in the end. On the other hand, what will matter in the end is how good of a person you are and how much empathy you have for others. Instead of focusing on stuff like social status or how many friends you have, just focus on being a good person and having empathy for others because that's what's actually going to matter in the end. When you're an adult, no one is going to care how popular you were in high school or how well you fit in with your peers, but they will care how good or bad of a person you are, how you treat others, and how empathetic you are. If you have a disabled friend and you get judged or made fun of for being friends with them, it's not yours or your disabled friend's problem. It's their problem. Do whatever you would usually do if you're getting bullied about anything. Tell them to stop and to leave you alone. Or tell an adult. If you lose friends because you befriended a disabled person, then those people never were your friends to begin with. Your true friends will stick with you no matter what and would never dump you just because you're friends with a disabled person. And most often, your disabled friend is going to be a true friend. Please be aware of that while you're taking your good social skills and ability to make friends for granted, those with disabilities are really struggling to make friends due to having not so great social skills. They cherish their few friends and never take anything for granted. For someone with a disability, every single friend they can make counts. Every single phone number that they get counts and every single invitation that they get counts. There's actually this one teenage girl with a disability on YouTube who has an entire group of neurotypical friends who accept her for who she is and even include her in things. Her mom said in a video that her friends like having her around because when she's around, there's no drama. We all know there's plenty of drama among teenage girls, but this one girl can't participate in that drama. So having her around helps to cancel out the drama for her friends. Why not consider that if you befriend a disabled person? Maybe if they hang out with you and your friends, it'll help cancel out drama. Also, think about how you would feel if you got excluded or shunned. Wouldn't your feelings be hurt? For one thing, if your disabled friend tells you that they have hurt feelings from you never inviting them anywhere, Please actually fix that problem and start inviting them places right away. Also, if a disabled person you know gives you their phone number, please text them, even if you're not close with them. This is another common problem among disabled people, including myself. I have given my phone number to plenty of neurotypical people I know, including my classmates in school and my coworkers, but not one of them ever texted me. Not one. I even gave my number to people who volunteered with their disabled peers, and even they never texted me. What's the point of volunteering with your disabled peers then? Believe it or not, getting phone numbers is oftentimes a disabled person's attempt to make friends because chances are they communicate better through writing rather than talking, and it'll be easier for them to form close friendships that way. Or, if a disabled person you know gives you their phone number, automatically give them yours without them having to ask. Oftentimes, a disabled person might want your phone number, but be too afraid to ask you for it or just not know how to appropriately ask. So they might give you theirs as a way to get yours. They hope you'll text them and they'll get your number that way. Also, if you have a disabled sibling or cousin, invite your sibling or cousin to hang out with and go out and do stuff with your friends. And even bring your sibling or cousin as a guest to parties you get invited to, so they can get the party experience as well. One thing to consider is, your sibling or cousin likely always complains about being shunned and excluded, and you're probably really tired of hearing them complain. So if you invite them to hang out with your friends, it might put a stop to their complaining. There is nothing wrong with siblings or cousins sharing the same friends. Also, if you're a parent of neurotypical kids, 
please make sure your kids aren't avoiding or shunning their disabled peers or excluding anyone they say they're friends with. For example, if your child has a friend who they talk about a lot, but that friend has, for example, never been over to your house, or that friend is never in your child's pictures, please talk to your child about it and suggest that they invite that friend somewhere. Maybe even have your kids watch this video so they can learn from it. If you're a parent of a disabled child and your child has neurotypical peers who they get along with or call their friends, talk to those kids' parents when you get the chance to. Like when you drop off or pick up your child from school, at back to school night, or if you and other parents said, sit and watch your kids during your child's extracurricular activities. Say to them, hey, my child really gets along with your child at school or wherever else, extracurricular activity, work, wherever. Is there any chance they could get together? Or if any of your friends or neighbors have a kid around your child's age, please arrange with them to get your child together with their kids and help your child ask for phone numbers. Or, if your child doesn't communicate well, give your friend's kids your number and tell them to get in touch with you if they want to invite your child somewhere. Do this even when your child is older, like a teen or young adult. Also, if you know someone around your age with a disability, whether they'd be a classmate, coworker, whatever, please, please, please befriend them and give them a chance. Take the time to really get to know them. Don't think to yourself, I already have friends. Those with disabilities most often don't really have any friends. So even if you already have friends, you should consider befriending them and giving them a chance. If you just think to yourself, I already have friends, instead of giving a new person a chance, that's called being selfish. Do you have any idea how it feels to be disabled and have no friends? Befriending a lonely person, even if you already have friends, is the selfless thing to do. Also, it never hurts to make a new friend, even if you already have friends, because you can never have too many friends. In fact, the more friends you have, the better. If you do befriend a disabled person, Please also introduce them to your other friends and invite them to hang out with you and your friends because the more friends they can make, the better. Lastly, when talking to an autistic person, only say what you really mean because those with autism tend to take things said to them literally. For example, if you say to them, you're welcome anytime, they're actually going to think they can show up whenever they want, uninvited. Instead, say something like, if you ever want to come over, just ask me first to make sure the timing is okay. Or, I'd love to have you over sometime. Or, actually make plans to invite them over. That's another thing. Don't say to them, we should hang out sometime, unless you're actually going to make plans with them and invite them places. Don't say things you don't actually mean to a disabled person just to be polite, because it's going to be rude and hurt their feelings in the long run. For example, if you say to them, we should hang out sometime and then never actually invite them anywhere, or if you say, you're welcome anytime, only for them to show up unexpectedly and you either ask them something like, what are you doing here, or kick them out. Whether someone has autism, Down syndrome, or another disability, we need to start befriending our disabled peers and giving them a chance. In fact, I guarantee they'll be the greatest friends you've ever had. I'll tell you the reasons why. First off, those with disabilities are most often very sweet and kind. They're almost never mean to anyone, at least not intentionally. You can always be yourself when you're with them, and they'll never judge you or be shallow about anything. They'll never judge you about what you look like, what you wear, how rich or poor you are, how well you fit in with your peers, how popular or unpopular you are, or anything like that. Also, if you have a disabled friend, you can most often trust them never to talk about you behind your back, and you can share secrets with them without worrying they'll tell other people. Another thing is, those with disabilities never take anything for granted, which means if you befriend them, 
they're really going to appreciate the fact that they have a friend and they'll actually care about you. If you need help, they'll actually try to help you. And they'll never ghost you or just stop talking to you. You'll never lose them as a friend. Most often, a disabled person's goal isn't even to become popular. All they really want is just one really good friend who includes them, who calls and texts them on a regular basis, and invites them places on a regular basis. Why not be that friend for them? Lastly, if you invite a disabled person somewhere or try to make plans with them, you can trust them to be very reliable. If you invite them somewhere and they say they're coming, they'll always show up. Don't just be nice to them and call them a friend. Actually include them in things. Invite them over to your house. Invite them to go do stuff with you. Invite them to parties. Ask them to dances. That kind of thing. Also, please actually be reliable if they invite you somewhere or want to make plans with you. Remember to let them know which days you're free if they want to make plans with you. Also, if they invite you somewhere and you can go, please actually show up. If something comes up all of a sudden after you had told them you could make it, for example, not having a ride, getting called into work all of a sudden, being sick or a family issue, please let them know immediately, just so they aren't wondering where you are when they expect you to show up. Anyways, please help me get this video to go viral so that Millions of people see it, and those with disabilities, including me, will finally be included and have friends. As I said earlier, those with disabilities didn't choose to be disabled, and as they say, we only get one life. What I'm saying is, my life with autism is the only life I'm going to get. I'm never going to be neurotypical. Please understand that. Although those with disabilities can learn social skills and get better at them, it'll never be the same as if they were neurotypical. You can't just become neurotypical if you have a disability, no matter how good you are with social skills. It doesn't work that way. Also, please share this video with everyone you know and tell them to share it too. Every share of this video counts. Let's get this video to 1 million views so that we can make the world a much better place for those with autism, Down syndrome, and other disabilities. I worked really hard to be high functioning and be able to communicate as well as a neurotypical person. I may not have the best social skills, but at least I'm fully able to communicate and you can fully understand me. If we all work together to make the changes I talked about in this video, those with disabilities will be so much happier and live much happier lives. Trust me. Thank you for watching this video until the end. I really appreciate it because it means you actually care. As always, feel free to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you get notified every time I upload. And you can also follow me on Twitter at Alexa underscore Gerard 98 and on Instagram at Alexa underscore Gerard. I'll see you guys later. Let's work together to make a change and start including our disabled peers. Bye guys.